That's just so important to focus on that inner voice and that inner guidance because that's always going to lead you to the most success instead of trying to force other people's concepts into your business. <laughs> Welcome to the Mom Entrepreneur Success Podcast with Mariana C. Ruiz, the podcast for the go-getter mom entrepreneur who refuses to let motherhood slow her down from achieving success and making an impact. Tune in Mondays to learn the success secrets of top influencers who also happen to be moms so that you can reach the success, freedom, and impact you desire. This episode of the Mom Entrepreneur Success Podcast is brought to you by my Freedom Coaching Program. Are you serious about making a full-time living with your business? Then get ready to implement the strategies that get you real results in less time. I will support you 110% for six months to create a business that has real results and real profits. In just six months, you'll have a business that's consistently generating leads, making an impact online and bringing in cash to not only support the business itself, but also to support your family, all from the comfort of your own home, so that you have the freedom to spend as much or as little time with your children as you want to. And not just that, I have had clients who have gone from a brand new business idea to paying clients in just three weeks as well as clients who have had their first 5K month within the first month of working together. So if this sounds like something that would benefit you, head on over to marianacruiz.com and click on the work with me tab. There you'll find all of the information about the program as well as a link to my scheduling app so that you can go ahead and schedule a time to see if working together would be a good fit for both of us. So head on over to marianacruiz.com and click on the work with me tab. Okay, now back to the show. Welcome to the Mom Entrepreneur Success Podcast. This episode is a little different. I have my previous client, Ajian Thompson here, and we're going to be talking about how she started to run her business. She got her business up and running. She made some big shifts. And we're also at the end, we talk a little bit about managing your money and how to start to like kind of do the mindset work around abundance mindset, which I think is so important for us as mom, as entrepreneurs, and realizing that there is enough. We just have to start to really see it. So I think you'll really enjoy this episode. Here we go. Let's get started. Welcome, Ajian. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I've been loving this show so far. Oh, thank you. So tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of how you got started doing what you're doing. So my story, I think, is a little different than a lot that I usually do here in podcasts because I didn't really ever get really deep into like the corporate world. I kind of always knew that being an entrepreneur is something I wanted for my future, but I just didn't really know in what way I would do that. And I (laughs) became a mom very young and it was a surprise. So I kind of got straight off of like my schooling, being in college and just having like normal type of job to going right into motherhood. And that transition kind of is what showed me that I really wanted to be able to stay home with my son. I just like got so emotional during the pregnancy thinking about just like dropping him off every day at a daycare. And also as someone who was still in school, it was hard to even imagine like price wise, just how much daycare would be compared to what I would be making. And it just made me that much more motivated to get something started. So I took some time to just enjoy motherhood or to try to figure it out because it was very overwhelming at first for me. It's like your whole world turns upside down and inside out. And it took me some time to kind of navigate that and then start to move into becoming an entrepreneur. And for me, it was really like meeting certain people 
over time and kind of seeing what they were doing as an entrepreneur. And that really is what started inspiring me to really want to take that path for myself and finally make it real. So as soon as my son was about a year old, I dove into helping women with their pregnancy and the health around that because I knew that a lot of the information out there, like the mainstream information for pregnant women wasn't really necessarily the most healthy things or really caring about what was going on with the mom. So that's how I started because I had that passion throughout my own pregnancy trying to figure that out. And over time, I started becoming so interested in the business aspect of that, that I kind of wanted to focus more on helping moms after motherhood in realizing their dreams and having financial freedom and happiness in general. And that's when I started working with you. (laughs) And you helped me so much to realize that what I really wanted was to help these women moms juggle being a mom while also starting their businesses and getting it going successfully. Yeah, I love that. So you went right from school into pregnancy. It just sounds like a lot of transitions, honestly, and into entrepreneurship. And then you had another baby, right? Yes, I have my other son is one now. So Yeah, I was kind of already working on the pregnancy business when he was born. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, Yeah, and you have the most beautiful photos of your pregnancy. Uh, Thank you. (laughs) Yeah, they're just absolutely gorgeous. We'll link some in the show notes because they're just really beautiful. (laughs) Thanks. Yeah, it was definitely like a whirlwind, but I feel like it was really meant to happen that way because I had never really found a job that I was passionate about. And I never really wanted to play by the rules, you know, like (laughs) that society has. I always knew that I wanted to do things how I wanted to do them. And I wanted to have everything that I wanted. And I didn't spend my days all day at a job that was just draining. I had no interest in. So I always knew that that ultimately would happen. And then as soon as I had my son, like I said, it was just like, I felt this need to provide for him and to be with him and to unlock freedom in our lifestyle so that it wasn't such a struggle and that we had opportunities and options. Yeah, that is such a big piece of it. Definitely. So I think you sort of answered this, but is there anything else that you feel like being a mom really impacted you in your business, maybe in the day-to-day stuff? I'll definitely say that it's always like an ongoing process, just trying to figure out how to make it all work together. Because I am someone who needs a lot of time to focus and to be alone. And so I had to kind of figure out the balance of spending time with them and spending time on my business while also taking the time to take care of myself and to work on my mindset. And then of course, adding in time for my husband as well. So it's not the easiest thing in the world. And I think that it's just always ongoing, you know, always trying to make those little tweaks that make it work better and make everyone happier. (laughs) Yeah. Totally. So what do you think success means to you? You've talked a little bit about freedom, about like kind of charging your own path and options. So I'm interested to see like how that all culminates together to talk about what success means to you. For me, success is really being able to always have choices and the freedom to create the life that I want. I don't like living in like a tight little box where you give yourself rules or you take on the rules of other people and just allowing yourself to see past that and not let any of that like keep you stuck in a certain area where you're 
in control of your life. And if you want to go on a trip, you can do that. If you want to spend the day with your kids and go to the park all day or whatever, you can do that just to be able to make those choices and never feel forced into anything in life. Because I think it's so important for us to be able to design our lives how we want them and to not have any regrets to know that we did everything that we wanted to do with the time that we have. Yes, I love that. Mm -hmm. And what do you feel has been your biggest success so far? Like what is something that you've done that you're really proud of? It was really awesome when I started working with you and everything just really clicked together where I realized the true area I was passionate about and then it was amazing how in just three weeks you know I got a client and then like another very high paying client shortly after and so it was just really cool to finally like actualize that dream because with the pregnancy business it was more like I would do workshops and make a couple hundred dollars or whatever but the freedom really comes from the business being able to have those higher paying clients so it's not so challenging to meet the monthly goals so that was really amazing for me and I'm still just love that feeling of everything finally clicking together and you know just coming together beautifully yeah I think that one of the things is because when we talked initially, you were so out of alignment. And so finding that purpose that you were like really in alignment. And we had, (laughs) when we first talked, I remember being like, okay, is this really what you want to do? And then we finally got, it was like one or two sessions and we got to, well, no. And so you're like, but now I have to change my domain name and (laughs) all of that. But Uh that's just the external stuff. So like once that was in alignment, like everything started to flow really well for you. Definitely. And I think it is important to be able to make those realizations that even if you've been building something for a while, if it's just not feeling right, it's okay to like figure out what you're more interested in or just more curious about, more passionate about. Because I think a lot of times people are scared to make that shift. And it is hard because you feel like you have to stick with what you first started with. But like it's quitting. But it's not always quitting if you know that you're going to be more passionate about this other area. And that that's like truly what is going to drive you. Because otherwise, like even if it is your own business, it could still feel as draining as a job that you're not that interested in, you know, and that's terrible to like build something that still makes you feel like that. Yeah, that's so true. And I love that. I think sometimes it's hardest to give ourselves permission to listen to that internal voice Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to really go with our gut. And I felt the same way when I switched from health coaching to business coaching. I was well, you know, can I really do this? And like all of this internal complex that we have and jumping forward was the best decision. And it was a lot like yours. I was so in alignment that things just flowed really well for me as well. So anyone out there who's really struggling internally because you're doing something that doesn't feel right, give yourself the permission, like permission granted. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I think that's so important. And even when you are, find your perfect place in business, it's still like a constant thing day to day, you know, listening to that voice on like how you're going to run your business, because that's another area where it's easy to like, listen to everyone else and what they're doing and feel like you have to do certain things. But at the end of the day, if it doesn't feel good to you, it's just not going to go well. Yes, exactly. Or it might work a little bit and then drop off, right? So it has to be 100% like you're in or, you know, save your energy, really. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, it's just so important to focus on that inner voice and that 
inner guidance because that's always going to lead you to the most success instead of trying to force other people's concepts into your business. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that you wish you knew a little bit sooner on your journey that you want to share with people today? I think that what we were talking about is one of the main things because I think when you first get into like the online world, it's just there's so much noise, and there's so many concepts and it can be easy to like just jump from one thing to another and not really follow through. So I think for me, I wish I had known to just like really check in with myself on how I really wanted to run my business, like what I really wanted it to look like and how I wanted to impact the people I worked with instead of focusing just on money because if you're just focused on money, it's not translating well to your clients and it's also, you know, you could go about it in any number of ways if you're just focusing money-wise. But if you're thinking about like the feeling you want to have and you want your clients to have from your business, then you can take that way of doing things and like find a coach that's good at those things or a course or whatever, just really learn that way of running your business. That way you're happy, your clients are happy and everything will flow easily. Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. I think that's such a valuable lesson and that's a really good tip. Thank you. (laughs) Yes. I think that we all just need to focus on the way that we're wanting things to go and not focus so much on what everyone's telling us (laughs) that we need to do. And I think that's why with choosing a coach, it's so good to pick someone that they run their business in the same way that you'd like to run yours. Yeah, I know that's one of the things you went through and I did too. My first coach was doing a lot of speaking and she is a phenomenal speaker. She lives in the Washington DC area And it's funny because she was like, well, you need to get out there and do some speaking arrangements. And I had my daughter at the time was on breathing monitors, had just come home from the hospital. And I'm like, I can't get on stage. I can't even get away from her for like not even two minutes. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And so I couldn't build the business that she wanted me to build. And it not only, right, it didn't feel right for me, but it was inconvenient and not where I was at that point in my life. I know you had a similar experience if you're open to share that. Yes. With my first coach, he ran things very much so like big group programs and where you're kind of not focusing so much on the one-on-one interaction, like where you're kind of just leveraging your time better. And I think that that's all, you know, that's fine. But I feel like for just starting off in your business, the easiest place is to start with those one-on-one connections because it just doesn't really come naturally, I don't think, to start with the group programs where, or I mean, you know, just like doing courses where you're not really focusing on the people and the conversation where you're just trying to do these schemes of like webinars and landing pages and all of that. And obviously that stuff does work, but I think that it takes some time to like build the momentum up to that sort of thing. And that when people are just starting off, they could get started making money so much more quickly if they do focus more on those one-on-one connections. I agree. And I think too, it takes some time to learn like who your ideal client is, what they're really struggling with, and you get to learn that through one-on-one. So I think it's a really invaluable experience. Yes. And I think when you do find that coach that's perfect for you, it's such a good experience because sometimes there is that fundamental issue with the business, you know, where you're just like kind of missing the mark with your messaging, like what was happening for me. So it can be helpful to do that with a coach. And like when you guys want to do things the same sort of way, it just works really well. Yeah. So I would love it if you could share a struggle or challenge or like a quote unquote failure. Cause I really believe that this is where the people really can get the most 
knowledge and kind of get ahead a little bit through the podcast. So is there anything that you've overcome in your business that you want to share with us today? I think one of the times that I was trying to launch and I was doing it through a challenge and it was funny because I really was giving myself like this very strict time limit and I was kind of just going through the motions and I'd had a previous challenge that had went well and I was really excited I wanted that same kind of result but you know sometimes giving yourself those harsh timelines just sets you up for (laughs) things not going very well because I was energetically just not into it and that energy people can sense that and it would just won't necessarily bring a great outcome and with that challenge you know with all those feelings I had put into it it wasn't very successful and I was disappointed with that but looking back at it I realized that yeah I just wasn't really feeling it I was just making myself do that and so now I never put rules on myself like that like I follow what is really going to feel good and what I'm really going to feel excited about at the moment so I try not to be like oh I'm going to do like a challenge every week or whatever I just try to kind of see now like where am I feeling drawn to, what am I feeling drawn to do right now? Like whether it be like a webinar or a challenge or just focusing on those one-on-one connections. But I think that it always comes back to that, like never just doing something, even if it's your own rule that you've given yourself. Sometimes you can even be putting rules on yourself that aren't really benefiting your business. Yeah. And I think so many of us do that because we're all high achievers. And so we want to plan, right? And I totally did this at the beginning too. So, (laughs) (laughs) and it's like, okay. And if I do X number of guest blog posts every single other week, and then I'm going to do this number of blog posts on my site, and then I'm going to do challenge once a month. And it's exactly what you said. There's an energy behind what you do. And I noticed the same pattern in my business as well. And Mm -hmm. that's why I was so adamant about having us, okay, well, take two steps back and let's listen. Like, what is it that you truly want to do? But having those deadlines and as high achievers, this is something we can so easily fall into is just going through the motions because we've set a certain bar for ourselves. Yes, definitely. And recently I've been reading the book May Cause Miracles and I just love her whole concept of love versus fear feelings in any situation. And I think that that's what it is when you're setting all those crazy deadlines. It's coming from a fearful place. Like you can't do enough. You have to like keep doing all these things in order to get the results instead of feeling like, you know, content and like you are going to draw these things to you. It's kind of that desperate energy and that never, (laughs) you know, is a good energy to have. (laughs) Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit more about that book? Because I don't know if I've never read it. I don't know if their listeners have read it. Oh, yeah. It's by Gabrielle Bernstein. And I've just been going through it with a group of ladies and is like a six week program where every day you're just doing like a small affirmation and like a meditation at the end of the day. And it's just supposed to be these subtle shifts in the way that you're thinking to open yourself up to what you're wanting in your life and to change from having that fearful perspective to one of love and abundance and well-being. And I just have loved going through it because each day it seems like you're just doing one little thing. But when you're really focusing on that affirmation throughout the day, it really does disrupt the thoughts you would normally be having that might be fearful and desperate. So even that little shift over time makes a huge difference. So I love that as well as doing like the 
EFT tapping and stuff like that to kind of try to change my mindset and open myself up to more of a, because it is hard as an overachiever to always have more to do. And that's the thing for me that I really wanted to rein back on. I just want to feel like I have those boundaries set in my business to where at the end of my work time, I really do leave the work behind. I leave even the thoughts of it behind for the most part, because otherwise I really will obsess about it all day. And that's not really fair to, you know, my kids or my husband. So I really wanted to set those clear boundaries so that I can be more present with them. Yeah. I think that's so important. And as moms, that's how we can avoid the whole mommy guilt piece, right? Because we're just fully where we are. So we're either at work or we're with our kids, right? Yes, definitely. (laughs) So I'll definitely link the book in the show notes. It reminds me of the book, The Wealthy Spirit. I love that book. I read it every day. I love that you sent me that one. (laughs) I love it just... I like those books where, you know, we're busy as mompreneurs. So if it's something we can just read like one page and it really change our thoughts for the day, like that's amazing. Yeah. And the wealthy spirit is their affirmations to help you with financial anxiety, I guess. And it's kind of like a little financial plan to help you get on track more with your money and manage your money. So we'll definitely link that in the show notes because I think it's one thing to earn a ton of money, but it's another thing to manage your money really well. And I think both are super important. Definitely. My husband has done a lot of investments and stuff, so we've not really been really struggling, but it's crazy how you can still, no matter how much money you have, you can still have that mindset where there's just never enough. And I see it too in business owners sometimes, like you can see how much they're bringing in. Like my husband's old job, like his boss, like they were making tons of money, but it's like no matter how much money, they still were stuck in that mindset that there's never enough and that everything's going wrong. So sometimes it's not even about the amount, but just that mindset behind it and that wealth mindset. Yeah. And you talked about it a little bit earlier, the abundance versus the scarcity, lack of, or not enough. And the truth is like, when you think there's not enough, there really will never be enough. (laughs) Yeah. And that's why it's so important to start breaking through those barriers. And it's such a natural thing. It's just how we're raised, you know, like picking these little money stories up along the way because it's pretty common in our society you know to have that lack mentality so it takes some definite work to kind of rewire that in your brain (laughs) but luckily it is pretty straightforward though I mean once you start making those subtle shifts and you just stick with it the results are amazing. So as long as it's a really high priority, I think, where you're sticking with it. Yeah. So let's shift gears a little bit. I would love to know if you had to start all over again, you had no business, no team, no email list, no connections, and you just had three hours a day and $5,000, what would you do? Okay. I think that I would definitely want to use the money to invest in a coach because I just feel like that is the quickest way to meet your goals, just having someone to show you the way. But like I was saying before, I think that that decision is so vital on who you choose as your coach because you have to really be in alignment with what they are doing with their business and the values that you both have. So I think it's totally a good idea to like talk to a few and just make sure you really know it's a good match. And that's really going to be in alignment with how you want your business to be run. And then with the time, I would definitely focus on connecting with people one-on-one. I would also really 
love to do Facebook ads because I think that would be a great way to like do the freebie with the Facebook ads and then like get people on the phone from the freebie. And what I like about that is just for me, it helps me kind of let go a little because it's like you can put that ad out into the world and then kind of know that it is constantly running and stuff. And it lets me kind of not have too much of that obsessive thought, like I need to do this, I need to do that. It's the whole concept of sending out the ships, you know, I'm like, okay, my ships are sailing out. So I know some will come back to me. Yeah, I love that. And it's a great way to integrate what the wealthy spirit recommends too. Yes, yeah, that was from the wealthy spirit. And I think that the combination of all that, like sending the ads, getting people on the phone, it would be a very smooth system. But I think that the coach part is so important too, because having that foundation is the most important thing, you know, like you don't want to be building on that rocky foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. That's really cool. I love that question. (laughs) (laughs) So is there anything else that I haven't asked you that you think you would want mom entrepreneurs to know to get to the next level of success in their business? I think that the biggest thing is just being 100% confident in yourself and your message and what you're doing and knowing that it will happen. Because I think that people get so caught up in always second guessing and always questioning like, oh, am I doing this right or should I be doing this? And they just lose that drive to just keep going forward and know that it's going to happen and it might maybe it will take a little time and I think that's a part of it too that as a mompreneur like you have to be gentle with yourself and you can't just if you're needing on a work day to really like relax sometimes you have to just do that because it's hard juggling being a mom and running a business And I think that you're always going to be better the next day or later on in the day if you do take the opportunity to like give yourself a break when you need it. Because I know that especially when the kids are little, it can just be such a struggle. So yeah, I think it's like having that confidence and driving forward, but still remembering that, hey, I have a ton going on and I have to sometimes hit the brakes and just relax for a second and take care of yourself because at the end of the day like you want to be enjoying your life with your kids and making impact on your clients but if you're not happy and you're struggling and you're just burning the candle at both ends that's not the whole purpose of having a business so Yeah, that is definitely what I would love to share with everyone. That it's okay to take a break. (laughs) That's such a valuable lesson. So I'm just going to recap it here because I think it's so important. And so giving yourself permission to take a break and put on the brakes if you need to and knowing and trusting yourself and being confident about what you're doing. Yes, just not letting other people's opinions or rules hold you back because you have to trust in yourself and trust in the outcome that it's going to happen because that's the most vital element that you are confident and that you're not going to accept failure, you know? And I think as high achievers, like, we're really not going to accept failure. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's Um, just like a matter of how to achieve that (laughs) success. Yeah. Yeah, And I think the way that we do that is through enjoying the process, right? And through allowing ourselves to have a break and to enjoy what we have done so far. Yes. And to celebrate those wins along the way, because it can be easy as an overachiever to be like, oh, okay, like go right on to the next like big goal that you have and not even care about what you just achieved. <laughs> totally. Okay. So how can people find out more about you? I know you have a community, so where can people find you? Yes, my online community on Facebook is New Breed of Mom, Mompreneurs with Huge Dreams. And then my website is 
just my name, aegeanthompson.com. So it's A-E-G-E-A-N, like the C, thompson.com. And I also just have a little freebie with some brainstorming ideas on how to bring into clients to your business. And that's at bit.ly slash nine ways to get clients. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was so great being here. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. You've been listening to the Mom Entrepreneur Success Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. Now, I'd love to hear from you. Head on over to iTunes and leave us a rating and review. By reviewing the show, it allows us to reach more moms to help them grow their businesses. So head on over there, leave us an honest rating, and I can't wait to catch up with you there. Have an awesome day.